Hi everybody, welcome back to History with Mrs. Lee. Today I want to talk about our second president, John Adams. Now please note John Adams only serves from 1797 to 1801. He only serves one term in office. And that is due to some of the domestic and foreign affairs that he dealt with. John Adams was part of the Federalist Party. He had served as George Washington's vice president and then he barely wins in the election of 1796. He barely wins against Thomas Jefferson and back then it was interesting because if you got the most votes you were president and whoever got the second most votes ended up as vice president. And so that made it incredibly awkward to have Thomas Jefferson from the Democratic Republicans and completely different viewpoint from John Adams, basically his enemy, being the vice president. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the foreign affairs that John Adams was involved with as the president of our country. And that was called the XYZ Affair. Now, after the American Revolution, we were greatly in debt and we owed quite a bit of money to our ally of France. Now, France went through its own revolution and decided to get rid of their king and queen and become a democracy. And so America decided, well, you know what? That French government, that new French government, technically was not the same French government that helped us in the American Revolution. So therefore, we don't need to pay off any more of our debt to France because that's not the same government in France that helped us. The French king and queen had helped us, not this new one. So that works out great for America, but France is very upset about this. So France decides to start impressing American sailors. And remember that impressment is a really bad thing in history. It's to be kidnapped and being forced to be in the military of the other country. So Adams decides to send over some delegates to meet with some Frenchmen to see if he can negotiate to figure out a way to get the French to stop taking our sailors and our ships. Well, these three men from France, they cover their identity and so they are known as X, Y, and Z. And they tell the Americans that they want a bribe. They want money in order to stop impressing American sailors. Well, the Americans say absolutely not. Adams would not pay France a bribe. Not going to happen. And when the Americans find out that France was trying to get us to bribe them, to pay them off, Americans want to go to war. However, John Adams knows that we are not in any position to go to war with another country, so he continues to negotiate and keep us out of a war. So this is considered actually a big positive of John Adams' presidency. Now, something that maybe was not so positive comes more on the domestic front, and that is the Alien Act. The Alien Act increased the time for a foreigner to become a citizen. Okay? And the Alien Act also allowed for the federal government to deport or arrest immigrants in times of war. So let's just pretend that we ended up in a war with France for some reason. Maybe the XYZ affair didn't work out so well. If you were a French immigrant, there is a chance that the federal government could have deported you or arrested you because you could have been considered dangerous to be from the country, from the enemy that we were fighting against at that time. Well, many of the Democratic Republican newspapers at the time decide to start writing critical essays about John Adams and the Alien Act. So, an effect of this is something called the Sedition Act. Basically, John Adams and the Federalist government, they decide that they're going to pass a law making it illegal to write or say anything negative about the government. So if you did any of those things, you could be punished and put in jail for up to two years, and you could be fined $2,000. This does not sit well with the Democratic Republicans, specifically Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. And so they secretly write something called the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions in newspapers everywhere. And basically Jefferson and Madison said states could nullify. Nullify is a fancy word that means cancel. They could cancel the Sedition Act in their states because it violated the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and freedom of assembly. Now, that's not exactly how federalism works. In federalism, if the federal government passes a law, states are expected to follow it. But Jefferson and Madison say, oh no, we are not going to follow any laws if they are unconstitutional, and they felt like the Alien and Sedition Act were unconstitutional. 
So this leads to a great divide in our country between Federalists and Democratic Republicans. The Sedition Act becomes highly unpopular, and so in the next election, the election of 1800, John Adams does not win the presidency. He loses to Democratic Republican Thomas Jefferson, and not only that, he doesn't come in second place. He loses the second place position to Aaron Burr. So John Adams is no longer the president in the election of 1800, and the government is now under the control of the Democratic Republicans. We will talk more about the election of 1800 tomorrow, but basically the election of 1800 is sometimes called a revolution because it is the first peaceful transfer of power between two rival political groups.